we all know that life is really encoded in the genetic code and how that genetic code is translated into living and breathing molecules in the body and how over a lifetime, how those molecules interact with each other, that really determines our health and disease spectrum. There was a very interesting observation back around 2010, 2011, that on the one hand, we knew that roughly half of the risk of cardiovascular diseases is contributed to by genetic and inherited factors, and roughly half by the environment. On the other hand, if you took all the known disease-associated variants, you could not explain more than five to 7% of your phenotype. So there was this gap. Some people refer to it as the missing heritability. We started to think about how can we fill in the puzzle? Genotyping will not be enough. Then we said maybe we'll do genotyping and we do whole exome sequencing on the phenotype extremes. We said, no, even that's not going to be enough because we're going to miss a lot. 97% of the known SNPs were outside the exome. I was able to just move to whole genome sequencing in the entire population. The way to try to tackle this missing heritability and explaining disease is to utilize what we call panomic or multiomic biological big data and leverage that to completely transform how we do drug discovery and drug development and biomarker discovery and development. The major idea is to bring all the different omics technologies together in a single project for a single objective. So the three main pillars for the G3 approach include the quantitative phenotyping, that is measuring disease states and how sick somebody is. The second pillar is to take all these omics measurements, which are effectively all the molecules in the blood that we can measure. And thirdly, to then integrate all those measurements. We embarked on an incredibly ambitious journey to put together the largest, most comprehensive, and highest quality data set that has ever existed. If we were really going to transform drug discovery and biomarker discovery on the basis of big data, we had to do our own clinical study. We had 48 participating clinical sites, three continents, nine countries, and actually we were able to do the enrollment of nearly 8,000 patients. We looked at the top hits from the different omics measurements. We found that they actually converged down onto the very same biological pathway. So we would have proteomics hits from the same pathway where we had the RNA hits from the same pathway where we had the genomic hits. We had a collaboration with a big pharma company around target discovery in a very specific disease state. And we were able to identify a brand new target on the basis actually that came up primarily from the gene expression data. Since we had the whole genome sequence data, we were then able to turn around and do a genetic validation of that target based on the loss of function variants. We then handed that target over to Big Pharma and they were able to confirm that target in an in vitro setting. That's a very important success story for us. I think it's only the beginning. Our goal is to get five to 10 to 15 new drugs out of the data set that we have today. That is in a collection of a number of disease states, including cardiovascular disease, valve diseases that are age-related, osteoporosis, diabetes. Parallel with that, we would like to take the same approach and apply it to other disease states such as Alzheimer's, some of the neurodegenerative diseases, musculoskeletal diseases. When we put G3 together, we went through probably a six to nine month process of due diligence specific to whole genome sequencing in terms of throughput, in terms of reliability, in terms of accuracy. It was very clear when, that we selected Illumina as the best provider for us to work with. It's been a phenomenal relationship. My vision is to show the world, show the pharma industry, to show the markets that there is an incremental benefit of going from genotyping to whole exome sequencing to whole genome sequencing. So that when a physician walks into an office, they're able to look at the profile of that patient, able to look at the molecular fingerprint of that patient and prescribe therapies that will work not in a population, but in the patient who's sitting across from me at the office that very day.